Hello friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am very excited that you're here with me today. We are going to be making a pocket fun fold card and I have created a blog post that links to all of the pocket fun fold cards I have ever made on my blog. That is right. So if you click the link in the description below this video, there's gonna be two things. It's the link that says measurements and supplies. First, you're gonna get measurements for this. Second, you're going to get the blog post that has links to all my other pocket fold cards. So I'm calling it the ultimate guide to pocket folds. You're starting with a three and a half by 10 and three quarter inch Mary Merlot cardstock, scoring it at five and a half on the long side. Then you're going to score it at a quarter of an inch on each side on the short side. You're going to cut away the quarter inch tab on the longer side. So there's one side that has, um, the sh it's like a quarter of an inch shorter when you fold it in half, okay? So you're gonna cut away the side that's the longer side. Now, if this went too fast for you because I was chatting about where to get the links for things, don't fret because I do have those links available for you in the description below the video and you can just go right over to my blog and print the free project sheet for this project. You can also hit rewind. That is the beauty of YouTube is that you can pause it and hit rewind to get those measurements again really quick. Three and a half by ten and three quarters is the size of this card base. You're scoring at five and a half on the long side and then at a quarter of an inch on each side of the short side. You can see here you've got a couple of little tabs left over. You've got a long part sticking up. You're going to take your designer series paper that's cut at two and three quarters by five and you are going to add it to the front where the tabs are, centering it up nicely. And then you will use a punch or a circle die to cut out a half circle, half punch at the top there. We'll get to that. Here I have cut an additional piece of cardstock at I think this is cut at two and a half by four and three quarters. Don't worry, directions on the on the project sheet. And we're using Mary Merlot ink to stamp it. We're using the Awash in Beauty Designer Series paper. Gorgeous paper, as you can see. Don't have to do a whole lot to it because it's already very beautiful. So I just stamped a sentiment there and then we're gonna glue this to our card front and then we're gonna do the punch. Now on the other card that I made, the other two cards, there aren't two layers, okay? So it just kind of depends on how you decorate as to when you do your cutting or punching from the front of this card base. In this case, I wanted all the pieces, parts to be layered down and ready to go before I did the punching. Um, and then I punch and then I have this cute little half circle. Now here, we are going to fold over the quarter inch tabs and we are going to add tear and tape adhesive to these and glue this shut and it becomes a pocket. So then you've got this cute little pocket and we're gonna make an insert for it. And there's lots of things you could do for the insert. You could um, add a gift card holder to the pocket by just adding a little piece of designer series paper that'll hold a gift card. A gift card will fit into this pocket so you don't even have to adhere it. You could just slip it in there along with the little insert so that you have a place to write. So then we're going to remove the adhesive. Now I want to tell you I had some trouble getting this adhesive to stick as well as I felt like it should. I'm going to tell you why. I didn't burnish the edges of these tabs with a bone folder. So do what I say and not what I do, because if I would have done that, the crease on these quarter inch tabs would have been much tighter and it wouldn't have had so much um, resistance in staying closed. So whenever you're doing a fun fold, especially, you really want to use your bone folder to burnish the edges of your folds extra extra so that they are kind of cemented in place really well. So had I done that, I wouldn't have had problems with this coming apart. Um, as it has sat in my craft room, it still wants to pull apart. So I'm going to have to disassemble it and 
probably use an adhesive remover to remove the adhesive, burnish the edges really good, and then go back in and fix it. Or I may have to use hot glue. The other alternative would be to have larger tabs, which means this piece of paper would be cut at four by 10 and three quarters, and you would just score it a half inch on each side. If that makes sense. Okay, this is your insert. Now, if you don't have what I have, I have the old tab punch, which is what you're seeing in the bottom there. This is a circle that I cut out of die cuts and you could just add it just like this. Okay, just glue it together, put it right on the top of the insert, you're good to go. If you happen to have the old tab punch, then use that. That's what I'm gonna use. I love this thing. This has not been around for many moons. Um, it was a old Stampin' Up! punch and I kept mine because I love it. So, um, you know, we all have older stuff in our arsenal that we hang on to and on occasion I pull it out and in this case it makes the perfect pull tab. But you can do that half circle trick to get the exact same result. Here I'm going to use Mary Merlot ink to stamp this little vase with this little sprig coming out the top and I'm not going to color it or anything. It's really beautiful just stamped by itself. It doesn't really need anything else done to it if you don't want to. And that is going to finish this card. Now I have other samples to show you so stick with me. And it is Saturday so we are going to have story time. Um, those of you who may be new to my channel, oh, and here on the left, I colored that little mug and with watercolor pencils and then added a sentiment. Now we're gonna do this guy. So really easily, you can change the whole dynamic of this card by turning it horizontal. I did nothing different with the fold of this card except that the stuff I'm adhering to the front is done horizontally instead of vertically. So, um, making this one a Christmas card, I am using the, I, I cannot remember the name of the, I think it's all wrapped up is the name of the stamp set. I probably show it to you here in a minute. I'm really bad about showing you guys supplies. I don't know what that is. I, I just am bad about it. Here I'm going to white heat emboss my sentiment that's going to go on the front. Using that anti-static powder tool is really important to prevent your embossing powder from sticking all over the areas that you don't want it to stick. This is particularly critical with sentiments because you want your sentiment to come out clean and crisp and not a big blobby mess. So I have stamped and now I'm going to add my embossing powder and set this aside and I'll heat emboss it here in a little bit. I cut nothing out of this video because I knew we would need to have some time for story time. And if I would have edited this video, it wouldn't have been long enough. So you're going to see me Ah, there it is all bundled up okay so you're gonna see me color in real time and you're gonna see me heat emboss in real time and usually I speed those things up here we're using evening evergreen for his little shirt and I think we use poppy parade for his scarf we're gonna find out I'll let you know as we go along actually I think I use real red okay so as I'm coloring, let's switch over to story time. If you are new here, story time is where I just share things that are happening in my life. If you are not interested in that, you can either mute the video and play some music while you watch me color, or you can fast forward. The measurements for the project today are done. You can go over to my blog and print that project sheet if you want to do that as well. All right. So let's get into story time. What, what did we do last weekend? First of all, we had a fish fry on Sunday. Well, let's back up even before that. The whole weekend was a little chaotic. We started out with having homecoming football game on Friday. I think I already talked about this in the last video. So we did the homecoming football game. I ended up being the barbecuer because nobody else in the booth wanted to barbecue. You're like, why are you barbecuing? Okay, because we had to volunteer in the snack shack. It was the water polo team's turn to take over the snack shack and run it for the football game. So we did that and I ended up doing the barbecue and it was a hundred plus degrees. 
So in 100 plus degree weather, I was standing outside in the sun barbecuing. Not my favorite time in the whole world. But we got through it. We did it. We're brave and strong. We move on. Okay, so there's that. The next day, my daughter had horseback riding lessons. So I take her up to that, come back home. Then she got ready for the homecoming dance. I took her to the homecoming dance. She was so beautiful and adorable. I could tell that she was a little nervous. She had never been to a dance before. So she said to me at one point, you know, mom, I may not want to stay the whole time. I might just get tired. Is that okay? Like, could you come get me early if I decide to, which really translates to I'm a teenager and I don't want to show fear, but I'm kind of scared about the situation. Are you going to be there for me? So I said, of course, yes. If you need me to come get you, I will be very happy to come get you. No problem. So I text her around 9 p.m. and I say to her, uh, are you ready to come home? Because the dance started at 7, was supposed to get over at 10. Are you feeling okay? Are you ready to come home? How are you doing? And I think I ended the text with like, are you having fun? Are you coming home early? To which she responded, um, having a great time not coming home early. So it worked out that... Uh, Katina, who lives down the street from me, who's also a demonstrator, her daughter goes to the same school and they were going to be picking up their daughter at 10. So they went ahead and picked Macy up as well. So it saved me another trip from going down to the high school. Um, here back to the card, I'm just fussy cutting this bunny out. Usually I leave a white edge, but for whatever reason, this time I decided I didn't want a white edge. So I'm cutting very close to the line and trying to make sure I preserve some of that black line and not have a white edge. And then we're going to doctor it up a little bit at the end. Okay. So she comes home and she's on cloud nine. She has blisters on her feet from her sandals because she danced all night and she just had an amazing time. It has been so much fun to watch her transition into this stage of her life, even though it's really hard for me at times because it requires me to let go. Um, it's also been amazing because she just wants to have every high school experience. And I was so consumed with other things at that time in my life. I did not, we're not going to get into me because there's no point in that. It's a long old story, but basically I, I was more concerned with worldly things than I was with just living and being a kid. And so because of that, and that there's a whole, you know, litany of reasons behind that in and of itself. But because of that, I feel like I missed out on a lot of just being a kid, enjoying life and enjoying all those high school memories that are so important and amazing and that you'll remember the rest of your life. So it has been a blessing and an honor to watch my child experience those things, be very present in her high school journey and do those things. I I just, I don't know. There's really no other way for me to express it except to say it's a blessing and I've, I'm enjoying it very, very much. Um, so she had that. So then on Sunday, we hosted a fish fry. So I don't know what fish fries look like in the rest of the world, but for us, that means that we fry up catfish. My husband sets up big fryers outside and we fry cat. He fries catfish. I don't fry anything. Um, I cooked French fries. Here I'm going around the edge of this little bunny rabbit with a black um, water-based marker to kind of hide all his white edges. It just gives it a clean, crisp look. Sorry, my camera's out of focus. I'm not sure why. Anyway, so he sets up two big fryers. He fried tons of catfish and um, panko shrimp that we get from Costco. Uh, My friend Janelle brought coleslaw. I made french fries. My friend Christina brought watermelon. And then I had baked a peanut butter and Nutella cake for Macy as kind of just a second little birthday cake. Um, So we 
embarrassed her sorely by singing happy birthday to her. She was humiliated, which was super fun because, you know, that's half the fun of having kids is doing little things like that that embarrass them at their age. So um, we sang happy birthday and she, uh, we had cake. But while all this is happening, it's a hundred and like six degrees. So you can't see my face right now, but I'm like rubbing my head because what on God's green earth we were thinking, I don't know, Lord have mercy. <sighs> you know, I was just like, why, why, why? I will say I did try to get my husband to cancel. <laughs> I tried to get him to cancel and, you know, it's just too hot. And he's like, it'll be fine. We have a swimming pool, blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, it was fine. We had a really good evening, but I was a sticky, sweaty mess. And by the time everybody left at 9 p.m., I immediately went and took a shower and got in bed. I was exhausted. I'm very fair skinned. So when it gets above a certain, I love warm weather because I'm a summer girl totally. But when it gets above 100, guys, nobody, nobody feels good in that, right? So except maybe my husband. I mean, he can tolerate it extremely well. So we called it a night and we had a very successful, very fun fish fry. Lots of friends came over and I was able to also feed Mr. Allison who lives down the road from us. So he came and picked up as a plate as well, which always makes me happy. He will be 90 years old this year and um, he lost his wife in 2020. And where was it? 2021. I can't remember. You know, those two years just ran together for me. Um, here, I didn't like that this covered up so much of my bunny. So I pulled my bunny off very carefully, added my sentiment, and then I was able to add my bunny. Okay. So Mr. Allison came, picked up his tray of food. He never stays. He never even gets out of his car. I meeting, I meet him at what we call the chicken gate. And I just hand his food into the car. Um, he's very cautious even now about um, COVID, which is understandable at his age. And, you know, he should be. So that's fine. And so I hand him his food and he goes on his way. And then um, everybody ate and had a great time. And then Monday was just recovery mode. We were tired. Um, we didn't do much. It was a holiday, so we did kind of a lot of cleaning up, laying around type stuff. Isn't this cute? This is my favorite of all the ones I made. Now, really quick, going back to the cards, this card was originally designed on my blog, I think in 2017, and this is a remake of my original. So if you are interested in seeing all of those things, make sure you visit my blog today. I have it tons of links on my blog to all my pocket cards. So if you're like, I need a resource for pocket cards, this is it. Uh, make sure you pin it to Pinterest for me because that helps me a ton. Also, I rarely say this and I need to say it more often. If you can give my videos a thumbs up and subscribe, that's super appreciated because it lets YouTube know that you actually do enjoy my videos and you want to watch them in the future. So, and it will help recommend see here where the strict card starts coming apart it will also help recommend my videos to other people some of you also went and watched my friend kelly taylor after i gave you that info and she commented to me she sent me a message and told me how much she appreciated that so thanks for going and watching her too all right if you want to see more videos from me you can watch them here of course, if you can shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com, I appreciate it more than you're ever going to know. It helps pay my bills and take care of our family. And we really, really appreciate it. it tons of gratitude. So I think that's a wrap for today. I'll catch you guys on Tuesday. Bye-bye.